video, we are going to explore some convergent thinking strategies. So what is convergent thinking? First, let's break down the term convergent. Convergent means to come closer together or to approach an end goal with more clarity as more limitations are added. If we add thinking, which is using your brain, and a design problem, we could say that convergent thinking is coming closer to an end goal by focusing on a design brief or a design proposal with more clarity as limitations are explored and options are narrowed. Essentially, this step is applied after you've gone through a process of divergent thinking and need to narrow down your outcomes. So let's have a look at some convergent thinking examples. We have the affinity diagram, the pooch model, scamper technique, PMI and SWOT analysis. Now let's have a closer look at some of these convergent thinking examples, starting with the pooch diagram. In the pooch diagram, you lay out this strategy to give a general overview of the problem. You then look at the options that you are faced with, all the possible outcomes that might come from these options, and then the most suitable choice for you to make. You could argue that the problem and options phase of this diagram is actually more divergent thinking, and you would be correct. However, exploring outcomes and identifying the most suitable choices is where convergent thinking comes into play. So remember, convergent thinking is narrowing down our options, looking at the most suitable outcome for your specific scenario, where you can decide what the best options are moving forward. Next up, we have the scamper technique. Scamper is an acronym that stands for substitute, combine, adjust, adapt, or add, modify, magnify, and minimize, put to another use, eliminate or erase, or reverse and rearrange. When thinking of things to substitute, you could ask yourself questions such as, what can I swap? I change the shape, size, color, material. When it comes to combine, you could ask yourself, what can I combine? Multiple ideas, elements, principles? How can I bring it together? Under adjust, adapt or add, you could ask yourself, what can I adjust? Can I add something different? Is something missing? Am I close but need to refine something? When it comes to modify, magnify or minimize, again, what can I modify? Some part longer, some part bigger. Can I exaggerate or minimize a section? Can I change the proportion or other design element or principle? When it comes to putting to another use, you could ask yourself, can I put something else to use? Can I use any existing features somewhere else? Can I implement existing products or features somewhere else? Can my design have multiple users? When it comes to eliminate or erase, you could ask yourself, what can I eliminate? Have I gone too far? Can I strip something back? Can I streamline any aspects? What happens if I need to remove something? And then the last one, reverse, you could ask yourself again the simple question, what if I reverse aspects of my designs? What will happen if I flip something? Can I turn it another way? Can I mirror the design or rearrange a design element or principle? This is a really good technique just to take your existing designs and look at them from a different angle or perspective. Next up, we have a PMI analysis. A PMI analysis is a simple evaluation or analyzing tool used to judge the suitability of a design. In the development stage of a design process, you need to narrow down your options and figure out the best suitable outcome to your design situation. In a PMI analysis, the P stands for positive or plus, the M stands for minus or negative, and the I stands for interesting or ideas. In each section of this analysis, by looking at all the pros and cons and interesting aspects of a design idea, you can use this convergence thinking strategy to narrow down the most suitable outcomes and eliminate your lesser options. And lastly, a SWOT analysis is very similar to a PMI analysis, except the criteria that you use in this acronym is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. In the strengths column, you would identify all the strong points of your design. In the weakness column, you would identify the lesser parts in the opportunities, you'd identify the things that possibly aren't working at the time but have opportunity to be developed. And in the threats column, you would look at all the things that would threaten the outcome of the product. 
whether there'd be any unforeseen issues in the production of the product, the use of the product, the disposal of the product, the list would go on. So a SWOT analysis is a very similar tool to the PMI, except that allows you to go into that little bit more depth. And again, this would be used in the develop phase when you've already narrowed down a range of suitable ideas, but you really just want to refine it and ensure that you choose the most suitable outcome. And this SWOT analysis is a good convergent thinking strategy that'll help you do that. And that concludes our brief overview of some convergent thinking strategies that can be used in design context. To ensure you don't miss out on any future videos, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.